Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is not Bunny Williams. <laughs> yes, a different person. A I am the completely different person. It's like fucking weird. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. Uh, I am the Pope in question. My name is May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. This is episode 437 of the podcast, and uh, proud we are of all of that. It has been exactly 436 episodes to get to this one. Don't do the math. It all checks out. And Today, and if I haven't and if I haven't mentioned in a while, I, I do hate you. Okay, just so we're clear. This week's movie, which we will be getting to in the back half, is the 2020 film Songbird, starring uh, Archie from Riverdale and a bunch of big name actors who should have known better. I wanted to read a headline of uh, one of my favorite reviews. This is from the Onion AV Club. And uh, the headlines, the headlines for the AV Club, they really get to the heart of things. And the headline for this week's movie says, the first movie inspired by the pandemic is here and it sucks. So that's pretty much it. It, it, it. This week's movie reminds me of one of those art films where it's like like Magnolia or Crash or here's 12 different main characters. Each one has their own subplot and yes. we're going to be running through all these different people and then at the end they're all going to tie together in a big nice bow. <coughs> hmm? and, and that's what this film seems like except it was written by someone who... It, is not a good writer. I'll you know? I'll, I'll save my bitching because I don't have a lot to say about this, whatever this was. Songbird. It's it's the first big budget Hollywood movie about the pandemic. At times, it feels a bit like uh like anti mask, but maybe that's just me. I how can you hate this film when Peter Stormari's in it? Oh, that broke my fucking heart. That Man's literally broke my heart. I mean, Demi Moore, okay. I could, I, I, Demi Moore, I could see, you know? Because it's not like you see her a lot in things nowadays anyway. No. But, yeah. Uh, so, and uh, they all took second billing to Archie. To Archie. Let's from just Riverdale. not forget yeah. this. Our second film featuring Archie from Riverdale. That's that's weird. That's really odd. Because uh, it's not like a, what's his name? AJ Appa is watching is in that many movies to begin with. Yeah. Uh, so, Bunny, uh, this summer has sucked for the podcast. I think in a good and entertaining <laughs> way, but it's all my fault. I thought that spending the summer watching low budget, hastily created COVID exploitation films would be fun. And I was hoping that the movies would be cheap and dumb and fun. But in the reality, for the most part, the movies have been cheap, yes, and dumb, sure, but fun. Hell no. No. It has been crazy rough, hasn't it, Bunny? But we Re got one. We got one. Last week's was wonderful. Yeah. But yeah, so I thought at this point we have just two movies left in our summer of COVID exploitation. This week we're doing Songbird, and then in our next episode we will be covering Virus Shark. Virus Shark. I'm really wondering how far wrong can you go with Virus Shark? Virus Shark. It's so, gotta. Ha it's gotta be good for a couple of yucks at least. I would that's, think. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. You know what we should do next summer? Uh, like Santa to... Jaws. Yeah. I was thinking, like, uh, for another themed summer, because we do these themed summers, we should do one summer of just, like, dumb shark films. 
We can do Sharkula about the vampire shark. We can do a uh, uh, virus shark. I mean, I, there's so many uh, house shark. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I thought at this point we have two movies left in our summer of COVID exploitation. So I thought we'd take a bit of time at the top of the show to just go over the movies we've seen so far. We've done seven so far. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Is this number eight? Yeah, this is our eighth COVID exploitation film. So I thought we'd just go over them, talk about them, see what talk about what we've what we've done. Thankfully, I have. I've been writing. I've been uh, keeping detailed notes. Keith! In this notebook. Yeah, I got Keith there. I got a couple of different brands on here. So I've been keeping some detailed records of everything that we've been doing. So the first episode in our summer of COVID exploitation was episode 430, The Triumphant Return. That was our first podcast back <laughs> after a sabbatical. Yes. And that was. <laughs> Um, what was the guy's name? Joshua Wesley's magnum opus, 2025, The World Enslaved by a Virus. If, if you're in the mood to get really high and you are just not up for watching The Room again, yeah. then I recommend this movie as a good alternate. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 written, directed, produced, and starring Joshua Wesley, or as I called him in episode four hundred and thirty, Guy Pierce on Wish dot com. Uh, you know what I love? We should do. A, it's been a while since we've done a fake commercial, but um, Hoodie Hacker Warehouse. Because everyone knows that all hackers have to wear black hoodies. That's yes. just a fact. That's just a fact. And then just, I'm in, you know, yeah. just random typing. But this movie was cheap and dumb and stupid. But it was so fun. It was so much fun. Oh, the first one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the first one. It was, it was fucking horrible, but in it that horrible way that you just can't help but laugh at, just like the room. You know, there was not an official high doggy scene, but there could have been. There could have been, and it would have yeah. fit just fine. Yeah, and, and the first film that we did for our summer was just so bad that it was good and i said oh this is going to be a fun summer but we went downhill from here yes like way downhill so okay so the next episode was episode 431 uh you know how how bad a movie okay. has to be here's for here's a game for the virus here's a game that we could play okay where you just read the title and see if I remember what the fuck that movie was. Okay, in that case, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like uh, not go in order. Uh oh. Okay. Corona. <laughs> corona, just Corona. We did a. Okay, so was Which that one the one this? in the elevator? Yes. Okay. Corona, a.k.a. Fear is a Virus, a.k.a. Wait, this whole thing's in a fucking elevator, a.k.a. Yelling the Movie. Yes. Yeah, uh, that was uh, written and directed by Mostafa Kashvari, and it was entirely ad-libbed. How do you... How do you rig an elevator to not work. I don't understand that. Oh, I I sabotaged <coughs> the elevator so it wouldn't work. But you but it picked up everyone. 
Yeah. And then it stopped working. How did you do that? Yeah. I don't get it. That movie sucked. I, I well, on a scale of negative 10 to negative 1, because, like, very few of these movies really even hit zero. Okay. Yeah. The first one, 2025, I would have to give that a negative one. This this one I would give like a negative five. Okay. I, I found it rather enjoyable in its stupidity. Yeah. Corona. With the one woman wanting to see if see the dead woman's palm to see if her lifeline <laughs> has gone away. You know, yeah. there there were some real what the fuck is wrong with you? Moments. <laughs> oh, uh, that episode I really liked because we came up with the idea of nice, of uh, Canadian Nazis. Yes. Because the old guy, the guy in the wheelchair had a swastika. Uh, he, he was a Nazi. And I like the idea of nice Nazis, you know, like Canadian Nazis. Yeah. Hey, uh, how you doing, eh? I was wondering if you wanted to drink a Molson and maybe go into the shower? <laughs> I'm going to be killing you, eh? So I, I liked that idea. The movie was vaguely racist, I remember. And it's like, yeah. hey, not all of these Chinese have COVID. And it's like, yeah, we know that. I, I'm a bit concerned by you saying that. Hey, not all Chinese are dirty. Yeah, we know that. We know that. But you saying that makes me uh, concerned. Okay, so let's switch. Oh, and there was that wonderful scene at the end of the movie where everyone's confessing in order. Yes. Oh, you're not the... I'm not the father of the child. Oh, I have cancer. Oh, I'm an alcoholic. Oh, I sabotaged the elevator. Oh, I came up with Jar Jar Binks. Oh, I started the fire. I let yes. the dogs out. I'm colorblind. While everybody else was deeply engrossed in whoever was telling the story, including yeah. the girl who only spoke Chinese, yeah, yeah, did, yet did knew like that it. everybody was relating a story, and it was her turn relating a story completely in Chinese, while everybody else in the elevator was still just wrapped in her story. Yeah. And then one of them has the coronavirus, and finally at the end you go, oh, I just came back from China. I was there on business. You said in the beginning of the film that you're a parking lot attendant. Yes. What the hell are you doing in Wuhan, China, for a business meeting when you're a freaking parking attendant? Oh yes, I work at Arby's, but I just went to Wuhan, China for a for a roast beef conference. conference. Yes. Roast beef con. Okay, here's <laughs> another movie that we did this summer. Anti-coronavirus. Anti coronavirus. Yes, Was that the Kevin Nash starring? No, you no. are wrong, my friend. Okay. Uh. Hey, hey, how about this? How about this? And maybe this will help you. Bunny, this movie was a bunch of cocky poo. <laughs> was a bunch of cocky poo. Yeah, cocky poo. No, I, I'm not getting this one. I, I You don't remember this one? This is the one that was directed by Mitesh Patel in Arizona. He's a oh, real the, estate the, the agent. The one with the my pillow guy. Yeah, fake crying the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that one. That one was that was another horrible one. That one he had was, like a budget of five dollars. He was having symptoms while they were eating out, 
and none of them were actually coronavirus symptoms. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a horrible one, which like nothing really happened. Is is it's there's nothing to remember about this movie. Uh, well, you listen to me, Bruce. Bruce Gunter, you have never given up on anything. And I'm not about to start now. Yes. Which, if you really take the time and listen to that, that uh, bit of dialogue, it, it makes no sense. But that's fine. Uh, this was a big movie because this is when we finally learned that prayer cures COVID. This is true. Which is why no Christian ever has gotten COVID. That was a big deal. Uh, this was a, uh, hey, this dumb, well-off white family from Tucson becomes patient zero because they traveled all over Europe during a deadly respiratory virus. These asshats brought the coronavirus to this nation, and we're supposed to feel bad for them. Yes. Yeah, so that was anti-coronavirus. Okay, so let's pick another movie. Uh, The COVID Killer. The COVID killer. Yes, that was uh, that was the, the New York, not New York COVID serial killer who was actually two killers. Two killers in one, I guess. Uh, and a lot of bad dialogue in a lot of places that were definitely not New York. And definitely, definitely not the Bronx. Yeah, I, it, it, that was the movie where I was wondering if just everyone in Brooklyn talks the exact same way. Okay, kids, settle down. You ready to do some freaking school? Yeah, I'm ready. I got my freaking homework right here. Hey, Jabroni, are you busting my balls? No, I ain't busting your balls, teacher. What the fuck you talking about? Like, that's how everyone talks. Yeah, But to be fair, if there's one thing I like about New York police, it's their extensive shoe collection. Yes, the shoe uh, collection was yeah. impressive. I personally did not know that such a shoe collection just turns on the chicks the way it does. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That caught me by a bit surprise. I I well, just didn't if, know. Well, Bonnie, let me tell you something. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna get a drink of my coffee for a second. You know, Bunny, you know I like my coffee the way I like my women. Tall, black, and sexy! <laughs> that was a great line. The COVID killer is horrible. Porn Goodbye, has Goodbye, Felicia! That has yeah, the goodbye, yeah. Felicia. They named a character Felicia for that one fucking that joke. joke. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here are the three things we know about the COVID killer. He only kills women. He always slashes to the left. And every woman killed by him has had sex with one police officer immediately before they died. But we're not going to do crap about that. Yes. So... Uh, that movie was horrible. Uh, Corona zombies. Corona zombies. I, I, this one, this one, like, was my biggest disappointment because I was actually I had, expecting yeah. a lot more out of it. Yeah, I was expecting a lot of fun from that one, but it wasn't. It wasn't I mean, it was, fun. it was a Charles Band movie for Christ's sakes. I mean, like. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's never actually done anything that, like, I love, like, uh, it's a big cult movie to me or anything, but, like, he's done a lot of work that I just kind of like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's crap. Like, like, Charles Band is still a couple of steps above trauma. Yeah. You know? But they're still in that range. You know, yeah. There's there's usually more production value in a Charles Band movie. You might see some actual faces in a Charles Band movie. <laughs> yeah. 
man. Uh, and even watching the trailer, I was really interested because it looked like it was it looked like it was going to be a complete parody of Dawn of the Dead. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But and I found that really interesting as well. And I then was we excited. get into the movie and what a piece of shit. I was excited because they got like one or two uh zombie movies and they redubbed it and it's like oh okay so like uh Woody Allen and what's up Tiger Lily this is going to be fun but I don't remember anything from that movie I saw it like 3 times I couldn't tell you a thing that happens in that film and it's like oh that's so disappointing well because nothing it was a glorified clip show yeah it was barely a movie where where part of the movie was zombie strippers and the other part of the movie was fuck what was what was an Italian zombie movie whose name escapes me yeah uh let me see corona here's a virus here you go dr mordred Wow. <laughs> so, um, the 1980 Italian film Hell of the Living Dead and a film called Zombies vs. Strippers. Hell of the Living Dead, yes. Yeah. Yeah, ugh. Uh, Barbie and Kendra. And then it had and then, then it had a silly wraparound with just some blonde chick talking on a phone. Yeah. While the television played, and the television would try to get all the pieces to stick together. Yeah. It failed, but that's what Miserable. it was trying to do. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, COVID-19 this, this invasion. Was, this was really, like, this was barely a fucking movie. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a, a, a Dumbo length. It was barely a feature film. Yes. It was this long. Yeah. But what's this one? The next one, COVID-19 Invasion. That's the okay, there we go. There's the there's the the Kevin Nash starring starring top uh, billing cameo. Yeah, starring WCW's Vinny Vegas. Starring WCW's Oz. Starring uh, Big Daddy Cool Diesel himself, Kevin Nash, yeah. starring in a cameo role. Yes. Whole thing is in a freaking empty high school. And they did things we're not really sure why. They yeah. The coronavirus is still going on, so they decide to kill the homeless. Because that's what you do. You yeah. kill the homeless, and that will take care of the coronavirus. Now, oddly, the homeless are homed in an abandoned school. Which means they're not homeless. So, so, so we have an issue going on here. And it's a problem with definitions. And... Well, I guess basically wrestlers not understanding words. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Uh, <clears throat> oh, and then it had that the at there was an afterword. This movie is so bad that there was an afterword that yes. lit, that basically said, "Hey, you know, we were all just making this on our own. Please be nice when reviewing this film." This movie, like, we know this is a cheap ass movie. Please be nice, but uh, a bad movie is a bad movie, regardless of budget. And then it says, st literally, starring Kevin Nash, but he's in like three scenes, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. They were able to afford him for an afternoon, and that was all that they did. Mm hmm. Starring someone who's barely in the film. Okay. And uh, I believe that's all of them, except for, of course, what is so far our favorite. Ah! 
the 2021 existential comedy Coronavirus Conspiracy. We did this in our last episode, episode 436. What a wonderful time that was. If if you have any love for B-movies, you need to watch this movie. This movie may even need to be in your collection. Yeah, I love this movie. It is a flawed movie, but it is a fun movie. Yeah. So fun. It looks cheap as fuck. It looks bad. There's no real lighting. But uh, how freaking fun this movie is. It's so dumb fun. It's about memes. And it's about uh, aliens. And it's about computer simulations. And it's about a large portion of it is about Harambe. Yes. And Ram Ranch, which is a podcast that everyone should listen to. So those are the seven. And and I I I I heard bad things about this week's movie, Songbird. Okay. I heard bad I heard bad things about it, but I still I still had hope because this week's movie, the 2020 film Songbird, people are in this. People are in the well Famous again. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to say. I don't want to say shit because I don't. I, I just don't have enough to say about this movie. Okay. So okay. I, I'm. I I'm. I'm that. saving it. I am I saving it. That. So so this has been our summer, the summer of uh, uh COVID exploitation. We do theme summers every year. We did a summer of Star Wars, which was not as fun as I thought. We did a summer of Saw, which was more fun than I thought. Yes. We then uh, after that, I was like, ah, oh, shit, I guess we got to do the goddamn Fast and the Furious movies. What? Fred Willard died. And then we had our summer of Fred Willard, which was freaking wonderful. Yes. So much fun. Watching because Fred Willard has and, been in three million movies, and also such a broad spectrum of movies. Yes, that's and part we, of what made it fun. Going from like fucking unwed mother, yeah, you know, yeah, to to we did a few uh, Christopher Guest movies, yeah, but so pick any one of them. But that right there is a wide range. Like okay. Unwed mother. This is like, this is really like Fred at his at, at his lowest. It took so long for me to find it too. Ten minute warning. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, that was so much fun. And then we had the Fred Willometer because sometimes Fred Willard will be in a movie for forty five minutes, and sometimes he'll be in it for ten. That yes. movie about the the radio host. Who I'll believe you or something like that. Yeah, something like that. He was only in it for like two scenes, but he stole the show in those two scenes. Yes. So the Fred Willometer was a lot of fun. And then uh, what was the other one? Oh, last year we did the summer of bottoming where we where we did um, movies on the imdb bottom 100 list of the 100 worst movies of all time and the interesting thing about doing that is that that list constantly changes so swept away the 2002 film starring madonna isn't even on the list anymore yeah so it's interesting and also uh yesterday we're recording this on sunday september 4th yesterday was september 3rd which is which was national cinema day Almost all movie theater tickets were three dollars, and I took the whole family to go see the the last Spider Man movie. Oh, there was good. a preview for the new Dungeons and Dragons movie. Yeah, and on one hand, I'm like, this looks really good, and plus, that's the gelatinous cube. Yes, but on the other hand, I couldn't get Jeremy Irons out of my head. No, no. 
could not get Jeremy Irons out of my head. Well, the the big thing that I noticed about about the movies from the worst list, yes, is that in a lot of cases there wasn't anything particularly wrong with the movie. It was just boring as fuck. Yeah. And that was Dungeons and Dragons, and that was a lot of the movies on that list. Like, yep. okay. There's nothing really wrong with the movie I'm watching. I'm just bored to shit by it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Dungeons sense. and Dragons movie, it didn't it didn't do anything wrong. Like it wasn't even bad enough to hold your interest. Yeah, like a uh, Street Fighter, The Wicker Man, yes. Spice World. They weren't bad movies, but they just weren't good. No. There wasn't anything that's like, oh my god. Like there were movies that I absolutely hated, like Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2, Disaster Movie, uh Battle of Fucking Earth. Madonna like, movie, like just fucking... Yeah. It, but, it was offensive. It was horribly offensive. Yeah. yeah. That movie sucked. But it, this it, this summer has really been a bit of a roller coaster. Because it's like I 2025, a world enslaved by a virus. That was hilariously bad, and we had fun. And then the other ones kind of sucked. And then we had coronavirus conspiracy. And now we have this week's movie, freaking Songbird. But before we run out of time here, I just really want to say I am looking forward this this chap. I am looking forward to this. This chap has been like bugging me since I found out about it. I did a test run of this week's Steve's Historic Approximations to my wife, and my wife absolutely loved it. Um, it's really good. It's about I I, I I'm gonna just I'm just gonna say a bit of the opening here. The it, we're going to take a when we're done, we're almost done with our uh, intro, our monologue, and then after this. There's going to be a short break, and then we're going to go into our next segment, Steve's Historic Approximations. And this week, we're going to be talking about America's most notorious anti-gay activist and how her connection with a theme park mascot led to a boycott of a breakfast food. Yes. And, and, and like, really, I, I really recognize all of the pieces each piece I have seen so far, I recognize that and I remember it, but I don't remember how it all comes together as a story. So you, it, so I, 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 I'm going to be hitting a, a lot of oh yeah moments while you're doing this. Yeah. I just know it. It's just going to fuck right. Right. Yeah. A, really excited about this one. This is, this is a, an important one for me. Uh, uh, right before we wrap up, I just want to do a new bit that I have that I'm really excited. Um, this is a bit that I came up with that I call why DJ Khaled doesn't babysit anymore. Okay. okay. This is the bit. So DJ Khaled's holding the baby and he's like, yo, baby, don't cry. It's me, DJ Khaled. Stop your crying. Yeah. And that's why DJ Khaled doesn't yeah. babysit anymore. Hooray. Hooray. Uh, I'm so freaking tired. Okay. Yeah. All right, so why don't we take a break? We've got three and a half minutes left, but I need to go to the little um, May Lynn's room, the little podcaster's room for a second before we move in into a uh, shop. OK, because my I don't know if you if you realize this, my coffee mug is freaking huge. Yes. So I've just been downing that to keep myself up. So it probably doesn't help that right before 
the podcast, I've gotten in the habit of taking a bath right before the podcast. I always think like, oh, I'm about to do the podcast. I'm going to be on camera. I'm going to do my makeup and wear my nicest dress and look so good. And then right before the podcast, I take a bath and it knocks me the hell out. Yeah. So then I come into the podcast with my hair all disheveled, all like, okay, let's do this podcast. I'm also going to be drinking uh, a massive amount of water and eating during the podcast because I'm a professional. Because I'm a professional. So um, I put on a hat. I I I I That's I have a bunch I of I got a bunch of guy hats, but I need more feminine hats. <laughs> I don't really have feminine hats, so I need to work on that. Uh, okay, Bunny. Uh, why don't we take a break, and then we will come back in just a short while with some educationally uneducational fun. Yes. Cool. All right, we will be right back with more of the Pope on Film after this. Do 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 do.